Hi, this is Michael Kennedy from Developmentor, and I want to talk to you about partial views in ASP.NET MVC. In particular, I want to look at the relationship between partial views and refactoring and having maintainable views and things like that. You can see the subtitle here is Avoiding the 5000 Line Razor View File. I think a lot of times people build these Razor Views and they just pile all the stuff in there and they kind of forget that they need to be maintainable and readable, and I, I think people almost give up on the hope of having readable, maintainable, clear views because you got to mix in so much HTML. So what I'm going to show you in this short screencast is how you can have readable maintainable views at least to some degree in Razor by leveraging partial views. So I have a short example for you here. Let's go and have a look. You may have seen this website in some previous examples I did. I'm sort of picking up where I left off. Now we have a really simple bookstore here. We have a couple of uh, books in our catalog and we also have a bestseller section. And if you click on one, like for example this Developer Cats, and you scroll down a little bit, you'll see here that there's a, uh, a picture, above there's a title, a price, and a bunch of comments. Okay, so that's sort of the, the application we're working with. We're not going to look at all of the controllers, we're just going to look at the views. Okay, so let's go over here and look at uh, the best seller page. This just uh, is provided a view model that has the books which are the best sellers, and we just loop through them and say, you know, here's the best sellers. And we use this bit of code that is the formatted look and feel of a book, right? This little white thing with the shadow and the picture and so on. Now you see this here and you also see this over in this section in the main page has those books. So first of all, uh, if we're going to build maintainable software, we don't want to have the same stuff in multiple places. So we can use this concept of a partial view, uh, sort of a reusable template uh, to, to help us with here. So first thing we'll do is I'll copy this content and we need to decide is this partial view only for the the home controller or is this for the entire website let's assume this is for the whole website in which case we're going to put it in shared there's also a naming convention that goes along with that assumption so we'll add a view and if it's meant to be globally shared uh, the convention in, in MVC is to start with an underscore so we'll say underscore um, book in list we're going to create a strongly typed control here, uh, view, and it's going to be a given a book, and it's going to be a partial view. All right, so we add that, and we're just going to paste in the, the bit that I copied from before and do a little quick format on it. Now, you can see that there's a few minor errors here. In our previous example, we were in a loop. The looping variable was a book called B, and now it's the model. So we just need to change up, uh, these Bs into uh, models, and then everything will be all set. One more down at the bottom. OK, so now we have this partial view. But if we go back to our uh, index page, we're not using it. So let's delete this out of here. And we're going to say at HTML, we're going to use the HTML helpers. So one of the things we can say here is we can say partial, and we just say the name of the object and provide the, the model. Uh, we could also say render partial, but um, that's not as handy and it's definitely not appropriate for what we're doing here. Uh, it's just extra uh, syntax we don't need. So what we're going to do is we're going to say the name, because I have ReSharper installed, it actually auto-completes. So we're going to say books and list. Now if I go and try to run this now, you'll see that there's some errors. Let me go ahead and do this in both places here, both of these. okay. Previously, we were working with this uh, data, this book, and now um, you know, how does this control know about that particular book? Well, if we try to run it, you'll see after a moment that it does not. It says, you passed in nothing, and what we expect is a book. Um, a book. In fact, we didn't pass in nothing. We implicitly passed the view model or the model of the containing control or, or page. So because we're in a page that has this kind of model, it implicitly passes the model on. But what we want to do is pass on the book because that's our looping variable here. So same thing over here. We'll say comma b. I can type. And we'll refresh it and everything should work exactly like it did before. Go to our bestsellers. There's our top three bestsellers. So if we take a quick look back here, you can see that our best sellers page is about as clean as it's going to get. You know, we could think about factoring this into a, a books section, but I think it's a little more clear to say, here's the books, we're looping, looping through them, and here's how we format them. Okay, great. Let's look at the index. The index is close to as good, but we have this big section up here, and how that corresponds to the website is actually back here, this big blue part. Maybe we want to reuse this blue part and have different stuff there for... Uh, you know, maybe make it show up on all the pages. So first of all, we can pull this into a control 
And same thing, copy, assume that it's gonna be shared, so we'll put it in the shared folder, out of view, underscore um, featured title section, let's call it that. And it's not gonna be, uh, it's gonna be strongly typed, but not with a book. Let's say it takes a string. You can see back here, it uses the title, so let's pass in the title, and we'll make that a partial view. Show you another interesting problem you run into here. So in this case, it's all good. We'll say, that the thing that goes up here is just model. Model's the string, we're gonna show it. Quick format. Okay, so this is looking good. However, I again, like before, I need to pass in, show that partial. Um, oops. I need to pass in the title. But if I say this, viewbag.title, you'll see it crashes. It's sort of a weird error. Run over here, it should be fine. But if I go to the home page. You'll see this weird error about no overloads existing. And you're like, this is kind of strange. And so what you have to do is you have to cast this to a particular object or something concrete that's not a string. Then it works fine. So that's a little bit of a, a weird thing you got to do. But now if we want to add this section to our other pages, like our best sellers, it's really simple, clear, doesn't add much clutter. And now if we go back over here and click on our best sellers, you'll see it also has you know, partial views best sellers up here. Okay, that's pretty close. We've got our, our views factored nice and clean, split into these reusable pieces here. Um, our index is looking good. Our bestsellers is looking good. Let's look at the book. Uh, one final thing is we have these comments in our book, and let's just do the same thing we had before here. So let's say at html.partial, partial, and let's suppose we're gonna have a um, underscore comment. Now, since I've uh, ReSharper installed, I can actually do this. Come down here and say, just from here, and it'll auto auto populate the name and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this, this does need to be a um, comment. Excellent, and it's a partial view. Great. Now it puts it over in this section in the home section. Uh, we want it in the shared potentially, so I'll do that. And here we go. Put that back, and just like before, we got to do model instead of C or B or whatever it was. Down here, we got to pass in C. Excellent. So this uh, book page should work exactly the same. If I click on it, right here's the comments. They still look the same, but now they're uh, factored away into their own little control. Now the last thing, you know, remembering the title is we want our stuff to be clear, concise, understandable, readable. We don't want big. Uh, opaque blobs. So we've pretty much addressed all the views in our, our system except for one which is very easy to omit but a very important one to understand how it fits together which is the layout. This is like the master page for the whole thing. right? So over here if you just scroll through this it looks pretty pretty icky. So um, this is kind of like the title um, it's got the the logo and the navigation. So let's turn this into a control here and make this a little bit simpler. So I'll say at html.partial underscore um, header and title, call it that. And we'll just let uh, ReSharper make it for us. Okay, it's not gonna be strongly typed because there's nothing about what we're passing in that's strongly typed. It's just static HTML. We can go over here and go back to the home page and make sure we still have our title and our navigation up here. I wouldn't expect it to look any different. Okay, but if we look at our layout page, it's getting a little nicer. Here we've got our featured section in our body. And the last thing, we've got this footer down here. Let's, let's do the same thing at html.partial underscore footer. And we'll create that. Do this last bit, format it really quick. Make sure our website looks the same. Reload it one more time. Scroll down, you can see our footers here, our navigation, our header, all that. But if we look at our uh, view page, our um, layout page rather, you can see it's really quite readable. We've got a document, we've got some stuff in the head. You might put that into its own control or something. Then we've got header, title, the featured section, the body, the footer, and then the scripts that go on the bottom for performance reasons. Okay, there you go. So. Uh, that's how you can take uh, the concept of partial views and break your page apart and make it really readable and uh, you don't have to have any code repetition or less code repetition, I suppose. So uh, hopefully that's useful to you.